Hello and welcome to my Total War Arena series, Last Man Standing. Today we continue with our tale of Andronicus, the Bloodletter. For his valour, skill and efforts in the Battle of Salernum, our hero Andronicus was promoted to the Praetorian Guard. With this, we come to the Battle of Jagovia, a hilltop opidum within the heart of Gaul. It is this battle in 52 BC that pits the great Averni chieftain Vercingetrix against the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar. For the weeks prior, both the armies of Gaul and that of the Romans had mirrored each other up the river Alev, with Vercingetrix burning the bridges along it to prevent the Romans from crossing. Eventually, the Roman Emperor was able to trick the barbarian chieftain. By splitting his army in two and sending the main force south, Caesar left two legions hidden at the town of Varnes to rebuild its bridges and gain access to the western bank. After moving his forces across it, both armies marched south, and five days later, Julius Caesar started the siege of Jagovia. Caesar's first move was to assault a small hill that was essential to the town as it provided water, grain and forage to its population. It is here that we find our hero. Andronicus' unit takes a forward position and protects a bottleneck in the middle of the village, a pass the enemy will need to transverse. It is not long before some spearmen move to challenge them. These mercenaries from Greece are a fierce defensive unit and difficult to combat when they form their phalanx. Andronicus and his companions open their account at range by throwing their peeler at the enemy, helping to reduce their numbers. But the spearmen were quick to close the gap as they charged the Roman lines, catching one of the Praetorian units out of position and devastating their left flank as they formed into a phalanx. In an act of vengeance for all of their fallen brethren, the Praetorians fought with discipline and precision, striking their enemy time and time again as they reformed their lines and stemmed the spearmen's advance. Gradually, the Romans gained the advantage, collapsing the Greek left flank, but they now found themselves isolated from the main battle and the rest of their forces. The issue here was that lurking in the nearby forest were some of Dacia's finest warriors. These half-naked foxmen were hidden from view as they flanked around behind Andronicus and his men. Their deadly weapons are made specifically to cut through heavy Roman armour. At the same time, some of the barbarian noble horse took the opportunity to join the fight against the Praetorians. With this, our hero was surrounded, one of his fellow units routed and was destroyed, and there seemed little hope being so isolated from the main battle lines. But a Roman will never give up, and never surrender while hope still lives. For out of nowhere, allied forces converged on his position, driving away the enemy cavalry and engaging the Volksmen. With half-naked men flying everywhere from the cavalry charge, Andronicus's resolve hardened like steel, and he parried away the heavy thrusts of his opponent. The battle's tempo had grown so fierce that the enemy now had redeployed light artillery and slingers to the engagement to win the centre and defeat the Roman force. These units fired volley after volley of munitions at the Roman force, gradually whittling down their numbers. It was to no avail as the Greek line fell to the Roman swords, but at a heavy cost. By the end of the engagement, Andronicus and his companions had held off 15 units and held the centre against their assault. Andronicus, the sole survivor of his unit, was ordered back to base to join the main battle line. And to protect his retreat, his fellow Evocati advanced forwards. As he made his way back down the hill, the enemy slingers made one final parting volley, striking our hero to the ground. Thought dead by the enemy, the strength of a Roman cannot be brought down by a single rock, and he rises off the ground to his knees. The last man standing.